This is the Coach's Wife Life Podcast. I'm Kristen Urkel, your host, a former TV sports reporter and fellow college football coach's wife. I'll go one-on-one with the strong women who are the backbone of college athletics and athletics of all levels. And now, Coach's Wife Life. This podcast is brought to you by Brewer of Hope. Brewer of Hope is a nonprofit that supports medically fragile children. If you'd like to make a tax deductible donation, you can use Venmo at Brewer Hope or online at BrewerofHope.org. Hey there, I'm Chris Nerlon. We have an exciting podcast ahead. But first, I want to talk about something we all know way too much about moving. Just the thought of that can bring an unsettling emotion. Well, I found a team that can take that load off your plate. It's D1 Relocation. This group can do it all. They can organize your move, coordinate with a moving company, and a trusted real estate agent. They can actually vet key household partners, such as schools, insurance agents, physicians in the area. They can even help set up your Wi-Fi and water. It's incredible. So I've come to know this team, which is actually founded by a coach's wife. I think you should check it out. Whether you're looking to move now or in the future, it's d1relocation.com. Now on to our awesome podcast. It is my honor to bring Christy Bowen on the podcast. Christy is the wife of Clint Bowen, the head coach of football at Lawrence High School. Thank you so much for being a part of us. Hi, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. It's fun to get to see you again. Thank so you. you've spent 20 years, this is year 20, as a coach's wife, mostly on the collegiate level as defensive corner's wife at University of Kansas, North Texas. In 2021, you decided to go home and lead in Lawrence, the hometown. Now, I'm curious, how have you seen Coach Bowen adapt to the various levels of athletics and just what makes him special? Right. So that is a very good question because um, I think about when he was in college, I, I kind of steered clear, to be honest. I was one of the wives that I didn't ask questions. I, I could tell he didn't like to talk about it at home. Um, he just did his thing and I did my thing and tailgated with all the wives. Right. <laughs> um, but in high school, it's very different because he has such an impact. They're young players. They also, I think, have a different level of respect for him because he was in college for so long. Um, Even coaches that are with us, I think they have a different level of respect because of that experience that he brings to the table. Um, And then, you know, there's that little itty bitty detail that LHS is his alma mater, also his father and his brother's alma mater. Um, And they were pretty legendary. I mean, so legendary that his dad was in Time Magazine because of LHS football. So there's a little bit of pressure. There's pressure, major (laughs) footsteps to go through that, to walk through. Pretty impressive. So let's rewind a little bit growing up in Hutchinson, Kansas. Right. Yeah. Did you ever see yourself as a coach's wife? Heck no. No. (laughs) I wasn't even on the radar. I mean, is it really for anybody? I'd like to meet the wife that says, I'm going to be a coach's wife. (laughs) (laughs) I, you know, no idea. I, no, not at all. No. Okay, how did you guys meet? So we met at a bar, very classy. Um, But it's actually kind of a cool story because we met at a little bar called Dos Hombres and we're so old, it was 25 cent draws and 50 cent margaritas. That should clarify my age right there. And it was my very first night to go out in Lawrence. I had just moved here on a Monday. This was a Wednesday. So I just unpacked. I met some neighbors. We're all from the same town, Hutchinson, actually. I coincidentally moved in next to some people that I actually knew. So we all went out and it was two a days for Clint. So he rolled in at about 11 o'clock after bed check. He was a GA at the time. And my girlfriend, actually, that I was living with said, pick a guy. I want to, you know, let's introduce you to somebody at your first night out. And I actually picked Clint. <laughs> so, Are you serious? <laughs> so I told Ashley, I said, yeah, like, I think that guy over there is pretty cute. So of course she goes and gives him our number, you know, cause we don't have cell phones. No, no. we so, um, And then he called me over and I talked to him for a few minutes and uh, got to know him for a second. I mean, literally, I want to say 10 minutes and I must have, you know, wooed him enough because he invited me to a picnic that the football coaches and players all had to attend that Sunday. This was Wednesday. Well, I never heard from him until Sunday morning. So I left with my girlfriends and went to the lake because who doesn't call from Wednesday to Sunday? Right. That means there was nothing there, right? I mean, that's what you would take it as. Right. 
So that was it. <laughs> Just kind of stood him up. Um, he left several messages on my answer machine that he was the only guy there without a date. It was embarrassing. And I said, I don't know what to tell you. So anyway, we redid it, had a first date, getting ice cream. And honestly, the rest is history. We dated and got married. And here we are. Wow. Absolutely incredible. Okay. So fast forward to now, yeah. your career has been so fascinating to me. We were on staff together at the Kansas Jayhawks and I've watched this unfold. Of course, it was before that as well. So right now you're a social media manager. Yes. You have been highly successful at various businesses and things. I want to hear all about this. And I've actually never had this conversation with you. I've saved it for the podcast. It's very authentic right now. So, I mean, tell me some of the things you've been involved with. And then how have you adapted to different changes in your life and city moves and, and navigated all of this? Right. Well, you're so sweet to call it a career because Clint would never call that a career. He would call it expensive hobbies is what we refer to it as. Um, I think the biggest thing that I tell other coaches' wives and when people ask me how I managed it all is that I'm very independent. And even in meeting Clint, you know, as a coach's wife and every coach's wife list knows that you have to be able to do things on your own. You, you got to be fine with staying at home, changing the light bulbs, doing everything right. Um, and I really have always been that person, but I also just knew I needed my own independence. I wanted something that I could dive into. Um, I, I don't want to say that I'm not involved in football or want to know about his world, but I really just could tell as we grew and got to know each other, dating and whatnot, that it was his thing. And he was always so good about not talking about it at home. You know, we had some rough years at Kansas and he never brought it home. He never really discussed it. He left it at, you know, at the office. And I respected that so much that I never wanted to dive into it. Not to mention, I always say that I'm a really bad liar. So if I know things, yeah. I could probably get us in trouble. So it was just kind of nice that I had a bit of a separation. So I just always found something that, you know, I could dive into myself. Um, I did have KB and Co, which is what you're referencing the store. It's darling. It's still on mastery. I opened in 2016 when we moved to North Texas, I did end up selling it. Um, I kept my small boutique that was inside. I reopened it in, uh, Frisco, Texas in painted tree, which is what another collective, um, kind of kept my ties here and whatnot. So coincidentally, then when we came back last year, the owner that I sold it to, she um, just had some personal issues and the store was going to close. So I decided I was going to take it back, um, reopened, got everything going again. And then would you believe one month ago, almost to the day, I sold it again because I just love social media marketing. I love this aspect and I just want to be able to grow something and really give my full energy to one uh, path, you might say. Uh, it's kind of juggling everything. Um, so I, the store is great. It's thriving. And I love retail so much. I miss the people. I miss just hanging out and getting the wine out, shopping with the ladies. But um, I really, I know I made the right decision just kind of sticking with this. So. And you're dynamic. And I think one of my first impressions of you, we were at a coach's wives function, I think. And I was like, football 101 for women at Kansas. And I was interviewing you and a couple of other wives uh, on the staff. And you just were able to just take over the room. There were like, I don't know, a couple hundred women in the room. And they were cracked up laughing and totally engaged. And so it was just so fun to see you in your element, um, <clears throat> managing those types of things, you know, just rocking it. So very, very fun. Okay, so not every day, like you mentioned, is... The easy day and the one, the press conference day and the perfect thing that we, you know, put on social media. Um, so to walk me through some of that when maybe things that weren't unexpected happened to you. What do you say is some of the biggest adversity you faced? And like I always mention on the podcast was, what did you rely on to get through all that? Right. So, you know, just a few moments ago, we were kind of talking about how um, you you get kind of swept off your feet when something happens, getting fired, right? So we have been insanely lucky. Like Clint's 
Clint's term coaching at KU, even the few times that we left, we are, they call us a unicorn for sure. People reference him as a unicorn because it's rare that you're at one university for that long, not to mention it's your alma mater. So meeting here, our whole family is here. But that being said, I think there's something for sure that is understood in a sense of had opportunities, we had job offers, but you take job offers based on, you know, the, um, what am I trying to say, the opportunity, but you also have to look at what you're going to be giving up. And that was for us losing our families. I'm from Hutchinson. It's you know two and a half hours from here. His whole family is here. Both him and his brother played at KU. There's, you know, obviously a loyalty for this program. Um, so having the opportunity to stay here and raise our boys and be around family and have Clint support and be loyal to a program that he gave his life to, really, I feel like that um that it just says a lot and it means a lot to us so when we were at north texas the second go around because oddly we were there twice um we the second time what we were let go in 2021 it was a gut punch it's the first time honestly as a football family we really were kind of knocked off our feet because every other time even when we were got let go from kansas the first time and went to western kentucky you just kind of know, oh, we'll get, we're going to get another job. We've, we know people, you know, the opportunity is going to be there, whatnot. But this was definitely, you know, right after COVID, we were settled. Like you said, you were kind of talking about how much you love Lawrence. We loved North Texas. We lived in this tiny little bubble town of Argyle, Texas. Some of our lifelong best friends we met in that year. We still talk to them daily. My sons are best friends with those boys that they became friends with during COVID, no less. Um, so to be let go, it was, I just keep saying gut punch because we were not expecting it at all. So then you have to sit down and say, what are we going to do? You know, now it felt like we really considered staying there. We liked it that much. These, again, it was family that we had met there and our boys loved it there. And it's Texas. <laughs> <laughs> My oldest had went to the state championship for basketball and football, won both. So he is experiencing something that you just don't get experience anywhere. Right. So, um, we weighed out all of our options and, um, you know, Clint and I, we lean on each other a lot. We, this is a, I don't know, this this career path, you meet all these amazing people, right? But the people that you know, you know, ride or die is your coach. And so we had some long conversations. We had conversations with our boys, which some people might not agree, but we actually just asked, what do you want to do? We can go home and figure something out. You can graduate, you know, in the town that you wanted to graduate in. Um, we can stay here we'll find another job, <laughs> figure out something else. Um, and long story short, obviously, it just came to going home and, again, being close to family. Um, and honestly, the crazy opportunity of Clint's alma mater losing a coach and needing Clint to come back. <laughs> so it's almost magical. I mean, there's no other way really to put it. Um, as soon as that opportunity was there, my boys said, yes, we want to go back. Um, you know, again, there's also, it's not, I say magical, but it's not perfection by any means because there's another high school here. We have a rival school here. I had no idea what that was going to encompass. Um, high school football is intense when you have a rival school here. Um, and I was at the other school when we were here mm -hmm. with my first son, Baylor. So again, I just don't know if I didn't pay attention to it. I feel naive in talking about it sometimes with parents around town, but um, it's different once your husband comes back as the head coach and then you have a son who's, you know, the starting receiver and now a son who's QB1. It's very exciting. Um, but as you can imagine, the coach and quarterback, always a tight relationship. Just imagine having it being father-son. And so. <laughs> I mean, that right there, that dynamic the first part is you think, wow, he's getting an opportunity to coach his own son, which college coaches never get to do. It's so right. precious. But right. then it's another thing that you've never encountered before, which is that it's a, it's a whole nother level. Oh I God. mean, your mama heart has to be 
<laughs> in two different places, you know? I mean, it's it's got to be hard in some capacity. Right. But like you said, it is. I just, you know, I constantly say who, I mean, what coach would not want this opportunity? It's crazy that he's been able to, the year that he was able to coach Baylor, both of them talk about it being the best year they've had. I mean, you go from football games that you watch at 11 o'clock at night in the media room, because that's when client can sit down and kind of watch the game with Baylor to right there being able to coach him and, you know, every night walk through plays. And I mean, it was just crazy. The dynamic was so much fun with Baylor. Um, and then now with Banks, it's the same thing. And definitely I feel like a little bit more intense with quarterback, but it is so fun to watch. And I just know when we look back on all this, that this decision to come home and him being the coach for, again, our hometown and our families and whatnot, that him being with his boys, there, there's nothing that could be better. And I think you could speak to this, which is you've seen uh, college football uh, for almost 20 years, mm -hmm. and then you're in high school right now at the moment. What would you, I mean, if you could give any advice or maybe perspective that you've learned through the process uh, that maybe a, a college coach's wife could have grace in, a, in an area for a high school coach's wife, what would that be? Gosh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, the biggest difference I see personally is that as a college coach's wife, um, people, you know, everybody says, oh, you have such thick skin, you have to, because everybody's, you know, saying not so nice things about your <laughs> husband all the time. But um, the real reality is, is we don't have thick skin. It hurts all of us, right? Um, in high school, um, wow, it is just as intense and your skin is still not thick enough, but these are your peers. And I'm with parents that I've known for 15 years. I'm with friends, I'm with family, and you're dealing in a day-to-day -day, game to game with people that just like at KU could message board, oh, your husband is awful, he doesn't know what he's doing. But these are people that are kind of hiding behind names that aren't even theirs, right? We all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But with high school, these are real life people and you know who they are and everybody talks and everybody, you know, has their opinion. And um, I just think that definitely the dynamic from college to high school, I, I really could not have ever imagined the intense um, scenarios just amongst small town and football and competition and parents and wow. <laughs> yes. and I, I, feel, um, I feel like college, we can kind of stay to ourselves and you, lift each other up with your coaching staff, right? And you're just there to support your players in this program and, you know, that that world right there. And in the community, you're kind of like, mm, people have their opinions. But in reality, again, you have a little bit of that prestige, right? So I don't think people are going to walk in and say, Steve, well, your husband, what was he thinking? <laughs> you know, in high school, it kind of happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so much more personal. Yes. Yes. Very, very personal. And you have to keep your priorities straight because you can't sit there and listen to the up and the down because it's people you've known for a long time. It's friends, you know, right. but you have to keep your center. So what's one thing you're glad you've made a priority in your life over the past 20 years as you've navigated this? Right. I would say the four Bowen clan, it's right here and the two girl doodles that live with us. Um, Honestly, I mean, you, I, we have, I, I can't, I, I don't want to get that wrong. I don't want people to read that wrong in the sense that there are amazing people, you know, this, in the world of football there. I still am good friends with people that were on staff 20 years ago. Um, amazing, amazing people and family and people that we turn to still Clint talks to coaches daily. I mean, that he's coached with um, myself, same with, wives i mean kicking the season off everybody's always chattering back and forth about the excitement and wishing everybody luck but um honestly the priority is your family and you don't realize how much you truly just lean on each other and how honest you are and you know this is the journey that we're on and and just keeping it real you know i've got a, a sophomore in college who didn't go and play football like everybody thought he should still it's funny when you run into people and they so where's baylor playing football at 
he's not. <laughs> you know, that pressure of, oh, you have two boys and, you know, you're just assuming they're playing football somewhere. No, he's thriving and he's in a fraternity. He's a pike and loving it. He's super involved and he's so happy. I mean, was football an option? Possibly. Yeah, he could have walked on Kansas for sure. I, I pushed him. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, just being real with, with our family and just having honest conversations, honest, I mean, you know, a coaching opportunity came up three months ago, four months ago, and we had to sit our boys down and say, look, here it is. What do we do? And we just, you can't pass up the opportunity to be with, with Banks and, and let Clinton Banks, you know, experience this high school phenomena. It is precious, precious moments that they will carry with them the rest of their lives for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. I consider you highly successful in life. You're an <laughs> entrepreneur. I love watching your social media, your social media manager, but it was before you even did that, I was just like glued to, yes. uh, to everything you do. Okay. So how, how do you do this? I mean, what, what all have you done to, you feel like you're not going to take credit. I can feel it, but <laughs> I'm going to make you take a little bit of credit. Uh, your husband has had a lot of longevity in his career um, at different, you know, obviously at Kansas for a long time. And I feel like a family plays a part in all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they don't do it. They're not on an island. I know you said you don't talk specifics of football, but there is a, a center for your family to be supportive for each other. So what what is it about the Bowen family? What else, How have you made it successful? Well, you are. You're so sweet because as a coach's wife, I don't care what you're doing. You never really feel like you have it together, right? <laughs> being successful. Um, but you're right. You're hitting the nail on the head. I think that it comes down to the people that you meet on this journey. I would have never, you know, I taught bar for a while and um, got into personal training and group fitness. And that was because of the people in this town just friends that you make through whatever connection that is and it has a lot to do because this is our hometown. And so I've known these people for a really long time. And so opportunities evolve through the people. Um, coaching is the same situation, right? So if you have an opportunity that comes about, it's usually because of the people that you know at that university. Um, and we have just been so lucky to whenever we've had to move, good gracious, the staff has just been so embracing and you again just still friends with these people I it's crazy to think about it's hard to explain to people that aren't experiencing it okay the families that you bond with um and that in a sense that's what gives you the opportunity so that's what I that's how I do it I mean honestly I um the store came about from years ago being in retail and um having a husband that says, sure, let's try it. You know, he's always been my biggest fan, always, you know, don't, don't worry. He said no a time or two, but <laughs> always so supported in the ideas. And he also has a really strong head on his shoulder beyond football. So he knows, okay, I think that this could be a success. Let's give it a shot. Um, and again, just the people that we know in our hometown. So social media, that's really what this comes down to. I'm successful because I know amazing business owners and I wanted to tap into doing social media marketing for business owners that didn't know what they were doing and felt comfortable in doing it. Um, and I wanted, you know, you can hire anybody, you could hire a social media marketing firm and to run your house right here in little Lawrence, Kansas. But why wouldn't you want somebody that's going to be able to go to the Habitat for Humanity fundraiser that you're sponsoring? Because I'm right here. I can now I have a little intern that's darling and she can go for me. Um, that's kind of my niche. That's my connection. And I love every one of my accounts. They are amazing people. And again, they have such a strong um, spot here in this community. So I just feel like all of my accounts they're like my own little families also now. So I just want them all to thrive. You said something earlier that caught my attention, which is uh, if you, you know, Google your career, you've been at Kansas for a long time. You took the job at North Texas and you talked about that town that you moved to Argyle. Is that right? Yes. Argyle, Texas, that you immediately made incredible friendships and all of that. What do you attribute that to? Like give us some tips for someone going, I've lived a long time in this area and wow, I'm kind of nervous to move. 
Um, give me your moving tips. Give me your, how do you get connected? How do you do all this? Right. Okay. So I, I really cannot take credit for this. And I know you're going to laugh at me and tell me that I don't, I'm not sharing the secret, but honestly, it's the most random thing. The first time we were in North Texas, we lived in the same town and two doors down, I met one of my best friends and we became best friends immediately. They had two girls. We had two boys. They played in the street. We sat in the driveway every night. Clint would get home at 11 o'clock. Chance would hand him, you know, a drink of water. Um, and, and we would spend time just in the neighborhood. Um, and then fast forward, even after moving, we vacationed with them every summer. They would bring more families from Argyle that we kind of got to know a little bit, but didn't get to spend enough time with. Um, fast forward to 2020, when we were able to move back, we were still such good friends with them. Our kids literally every summer vacation together. So it was again, you know, I'm a big believer in God's timing and there is something to be said for, it just kind of works out. Um, funny story though. I love to tell this story that, okay, it's COVID, right? So the world is shutting down. We right. moved the week the world shut down. We moved on to the right. Yeah. So we moved into this beautiful neighborhood, our favorite little Texas town and the schools were open, but everything was a little wonky, right? Um, and so the first half of the year, the boys aren't going to know people, everything was close, right? So coincidentally, one of our good friends that we had met through our friends that we lived by, their daughter, um, started a Snapchat group with Baylor, who was going to be a junior and all these friends and basically said, Maggie's amazing. First of all, she cheers at OSU, by the way, go check her out. Um, she just said, meet Baylor. And this is how our world works now. So social media, this is why I love it so much. It's so powerful when it's for good right. um, that all these people were like, hey, Baylor, hey, Baylor, you know, on Snapchat of all things. And then he went to a basketball game. And I just remember my, my bestie there, Lacey, sending me a picture of Baylor and Banks in the student section before we had moved there and said, they're going to be fine. And so honestly, that's how they met all their friends. Right. And I don't know what it is, but they, that town and the people there, I still just love them all dearly. They're just all amazing. And like I said, we're still, I follow Maggie. We're going to be going to watch her cheer in a couple of weeks, actually. Um, everybody is just amazing there. So I really feel like I don't have a secret because I feel like we've just been, God swooped us up. I'm, I, I don't know how else to say it, but I do think that, um, a coach's wife many years ago, Stephanie Quartaro, I love her dearly, still talk to her. And she, ne I'll never forget that she told me, whenever you move, you always have to make it an exciting adventure for your children. That's all that matters. You just want the kids to feel like, oh, this is going to be fun. And so I feel like that's one thing that I've always encompassed. I've always been very honest with my boys. This isn't going to be easy you're moving your junior of high school Baylor into this new high school, but it's going to be great. You start talking about the people, you start talking about the things around us, Dallas, all the fun things that we could do. And then of course the school and the athletic programs, they went to state football, Baylor, this is going to be so fun. You know, you're not going to have this opportunity here until now that we came back. Um, so it, that's something that I've carried with me as a coach's wife, Stephanie's words of wisdom, just to focus on the kids and make them get excited about this new adventure. Just make sure that it looks like an adventure for them and then everything else will work out. And talk to me, your kids are a little bit older than mine. Obviously, they've lived this life a little bit longer. Uh, one's in college, the other's in high school, mine are 12 and below. So for the I'll, mom's kind of coming behind you, although I'm probably the same age. But anyway, my, my different seasons uh, of life for the kids, the ages, something you also said that was interesting, which was, you know, your son obviously faced some pressure because his dad was a phenomenal player at Kansas and, you know, coaching. And he decides to go to University of Arkansas and uh, go in that direction and not play football. How did you walk him through the comments or or helping him know uh, what was best for him? How did, how did that how did navigate some of those conversations as coaches with our kids, maybe choosing to do something they're passionate about. Right. Absolutely. So I think it's important to acknowledge that Clint is so good at handling 
these conversations. And when you mentioned how has he adapted to high school, that's been what I've seen that is really amazing because in our world today, I think that sports have always been intense. It's a lot, right? Everybody wants to win. You want your kid to be on the best team. You want your kid to be seen. You want him to shine. But the fact of the matter is, is Clint will say it day in and day out, it's this many people, this many players get to go on and play. So you have to think about what's going to happen if there is no football. Um, and I've just always loved him so much for that and being honest with parents and players alike, because Again, right now, it should be fun. These are the moments that these kids are going to have for the rest. I look at my husband. He still talks about LHS football. I'm, I'm done with it, but he will talk about it. And to me, that says something because that's tradition and his love of those memories that he has, right? And I just want my boys to feel the same exact way. And I wish, honestly, that other parents would learn that. Honestly, I think that parents, you know, you have all this pressure on your kids, just let them live. You know, my, I always tell my boys and they make fun of me every time, just have fun, just go and have play football. You know, it's not just play and just have fun. So I think for Baylor, he knew he, we've had so many conversations with him, you know, even Clint, I remember having a, a talk with him one night about you know, I kind of feel like looking back, I didn't really have the same college experience that other people have. You know, football, it's a job. This, it's not always fun, Baylor. Yeah, you get all the, you know, Baylor would always ask, what's the gear that? <laughs> right. uh, so everyone loves, uh, loves all of that. But it's also, you're getting up at 5 a.m. to go to workouts. You're, you know, when everybody else is going out to the bar, you're going to another practice. You know, you're, this, the, the memories that he has, Clint, as an athlete, he often looks at his friends that were in fraternities and think, oh, well, I could have done that, I guess, right? So those were conversations that we had with Baylor. And then we just simply told him, you, I mean, nothing is end all, do all, right? So you right. go to Arkansas, you want to come home, you want to try to walk on somewhere else, you want to do, I mean, you just do you, just do whatever you feel is in your heart right now. And I 100% think that he made the right decision and is loving every second there, so. And we're so proud of him. It's just awesome to watch him. And we knew nothing about the fraternity life. So it's been kind of fun. That is kind of fun to work through. Um, you talked about, you know, you got an advice from a coach's wife years ago. Do you have a specific mentor or do you have kind of a close knit group you bounce ideas off of? You know, I wouldn't say that I have a close group. I feel like there's so many and I love that they're kind of spread out and they're in different, you know, worlds. Uh, one of the coach's wife, I still talks to talk to Often, Anne Marie, they're in Colorado, but they're not coaching right now. Stephanie, as I mentioned, um, you know, I've had such amazing head coach's wife. Margie at North Texas, the first time we were there. Oh my gosh, I will never forget them. I mean, her and Dan. Um, I would say that was one of the first times it was a smaller program. So just how they would really embrace us and we'd spend a lot of time with them and that Stephanie was with us there, Stephanie Quartaro. Um, and so I just love how I have people kind of spread out everywhere. And um, if you ever did have to move or something, I love just knowing that you have families that are going to help you. Absolutely. So the biggest thing, obviously, is being a head coach's wife. There's people that strive for that their entire career. Not everybody gets to that point. Okay. And all of us think about, like, what would I do if I were a head coach's wife? How, what would I do for the wives? How would I build camaraderie? What were some of the things that you were thinking all along now that you're a head coach's wife? And like, I'm going to do this. Right. Okay, so that's a funny question because I think high school is so different because if you think about it, when you're in college, most everybody just moved in, right? right. So they don't have that um, community involvement already. They don't have their family and established friends. Everybody here at the high school level, your, your families are all here. We even have um, a handful of new coaches this year, but we already knew them and all their families are here. One of them was Baylor's favorite coach when he played here back in what, what would that be, 2019? And now he's at our school. So it's been kind of a whole fun little journey bringing them back in, but their whole, all their family is here. So I hate to say that I really haven't had to do much. I haven't really had hands and with the coaching staff and things like that. Um, we, in high school, I do think too, that you focus so much more on the players because, you know, think about it in college, they have a hefty budget. 
high school, we have an itty bitty budget. <laughs> so we work so much, all of our time and everything goes into fundraising and raising money just to feed our hungry players. Um, and then that being said, even beyond the coaching staff, you know, the difference with high school is I have these phenomenal moms that work endless, tireless hours organizing everything. Um, and I'm very involved coach's wife, I think, more involved than other high school coaches' wife. Again, because I think that when you have players, you know, I've had my two boys in the program. Of course, I'm going to volunteer to help and want to help. So it'll be interesting to see once Baylor or once Banks graduates and finishes how I incorporate myself because I get the I get feedback often that I'm this is not normal how involved I am as a coach's wife. So it's kind of interesting to hear that, you know, with high school because this is all I've ever known. Coaches' wives are always very involved. We very know. involved. Everybody. Right, right. So um it's it's been a learning process. And you know, again, as I mentioned, people aren't afraid to tell you, what are you doing? <laughs> You know, the moms got it, but, um, and again, they do. Holy cow. These our moms here. They, it's insane what they do. And it's neat relationships. Like you said, you know, Clint talks about his high school years. And, and I think when you said that, I'm like, you're right. My husband, Joshua talks about his high school football playing days, probably more than any. Uh, absolutely. Period of time Ooh. in his life. Yeah. It yeah. still comes up. Yeah. 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 For think- sure. I mean, you're at that age. This is where this is all it is. It is all football, right? So, yeah, it's awesome. It's just that's what we love. I love to see Clint with the players and these boys. Oh, my gosh. High school is just so different because they are just still so excited and squirrely and, you know, it's fun. fun. Okay, so do you guys have date night? Do you do anything fun during the week or is it pretty much – all involved in your kids at all times? How do you navigate that? Okay. So I would say over the last couple of years, definitely. You just have so many kids activities. You're just trying to keep up with it all. So this will explain it all. Friday night, we have a football game, home football game. And then as soon as the game is over, brace yourself because my husband is leaving with me and missing film the next morning because we have to drive to Arkansas because it's parents weekend. So we're going to drive and get to Arkansas probably about two in the morning to spend Saturday game day, go to the Arkansas football game and spend the day with Baylor and come home Sunday. So when your kids are busy and you've got all these different things, I wouldn't say we have date nights. No, (laughs) but our date nights consist of our patio. Um, Clint and I, we just love to kind of downtime and decompress just right here. We live out in the country and He's kind of antisocial from having to be so social often, right? So um, over the years, I figured out a good date night is really just the two of us right here. Very relaxing, calming. Yes. How do you spend your downtime? Oh, gosh. Well, I really like trash TV. So <laughs> <laughs> that's how I turn my brain off. Um, and then, you know, I'm a social media person. So as far as ideas and brainstorming, I am on social media pretty much 24 hours a day, just looking for ideas and saving and screenshotting. My phone probably has 40,000 pictures on it right now. Um, so that's really my downtime. I just love to work. You know, they always say, do what you love and you'll never feel like you're working. That's kind of where I am. I love it. All right. Final question for you. Give me two to three favorite memories of being a coach's wife. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, you have to say a bowl game, right? There's nothing better than a bowl game. Um, You're spoiled rotten. And then um, also there's a couple of games that were just really, really fun. You know, as a coach's wife, you always have the wives trips. Again, out of the ordinary for me, this is, you know, home. I have a lot of friends here that were outside of the coaching staff. So if they could travel they would travel with me. So I might fly with the team, but then everybody else would fly or drive down there. So I had some really great moments, you know, where you get, obviously you get the perks of getting your friends tickets and you're helping everybody, right? And the back behind the scenes and you already have a tailgate because all the wives are going. So I I mean, gosh, my memories of incorporating my best friends with coaching staff, best friends, There's, I mean, gosh, those are some of the best memories. And then, you know, I keep saying it and it's so cliche, but I know you'll agree with this. Just the people that you meet. I mean, all of the memories that you have with all these different people of all different walks of life and all the 
players that Clint has that have been in the NFL and they still call in the moments that you listen to these conversations that he's, you know, just the way they love each other, these players and coaches, their bonds that they have. There's nothing like it. It's all about people. It is. It's really- all right. Rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Here we go. What's the last book you've read? The last book I read is Firefly Lane, Firefly Lane and it was a TV show, and y'all should watch it because it's amazing. Coach surprises you. Walk some door with concert tickets. Where are you going? Well, I just went to Taylor, so I don't know how you beat that. <laughs> uh, but anything. I mean, first, he's not really a concert going guy. So if he walked in with concert tickets, I'd be pretty static for anything. <laughs> if you could have dinner with someone other than family member current from history, who would that be? Um, from history only or well, current? current or from history? Yeah, I would for sure say Ellen. You know, Banks and I, we loved Ellen so much and we're so sad when she got canceled. And Banks and I, we'd always joke about how we were going to go see her. And so, I mean, to be able to have that opportunity to go see her, I would choose Ellen. You get a night alone. What show are you binge watching? Well, I already let the cat out of the bag. I'm a trash TV. Any housewives, but I would say Sex in the City. I'm always, it's always on. Clint makes fun of me. I actually own the DVD set. I can watch it over and over again. That or Friends. Friends is probably a good one too. Friends. Yeah. yeah girl. What's your go-to meal to cook? Okay. So I don't really cook. <laughs> so. I, I can't even pretend because I know somebody will see this and say she is so. But I do connect it to football staff and wives. I make a really amazing homemade salsa, and I learned it from a coach's wife. And I'm actually making it this weekend to take to Arkansas. You have to share. Oh my gosh, it's so good! It has tomatillos in it, and my boys die for it. It's awesome. What sport can you beat Coach Bowen in? Oh, okay. So snow skiing. I've always been better than him. But he is catching up to me because I feel like as we get older, moms, I get a little nervous about breaking my leg or something. And then um, just recently we were shooting clay pigeons. Is that a sport? And I hit clay pigeon the first, like first try. He's really good and kind of like messing it up, botching it or whatever. And I literally just, I don't even know how I did it because I'm not good. (laughs) Nice. Thank you so much for the time. This has been so much fun, Christine. Thank you, Kristen. It's so awesome. Thank you. This podcast is brought to you by Brewer of Hope. Brewer of Hope is a nonprofit that supports medically fragile children. If you'd like to make a tax-deductible donation, you can use Venmo at Brewer-Hope or online at BrewerofHope.org. For a replay of this episode or previous episodes, visit CoachesWifeLife.org and follow us on social media at CoachesWifeLife.